all together, it's 33 years I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. What got you into the business? I, you know, there's nothing specific other than I always used to sort of hang around used bookstores, antique stores. You know, I lived down the far south side, we'd come down the, to the loop and hit all the used bookstores that were in the loop, which in those days, you know, in the 60s, there were a lot. Just over the river and what's now River North was kind of like a sketchy slum in those days. It was kind of, you know, a little scary to be poking around, but there was two or three used bookstores on that stretch too on, on uh, North State Street there. And we'd hit Crack and Montano's, we'd hit Rose Records. This is what we did for fun, <laughs> me and my couple friends. I was an English major in college. What do English majors do when they get out? They have to figure something out. But you work in other people's bookstores, it's low pay and hard work and interesting stuff. But after a certain time, you either move on or you do it yourself because there's only so far you're going to go working in somebody else's smallish, you know, owner operated bookstore. And uh, so I saved up books that I was finding in thrift stores and, you know, used book sales and things like that and uh, decided to just to give it a try and, you know, rented a store for like, I don't know, say $500 a month. And I had uh, a lot of books and just in my apartment, I probably pulled about 60 cartons of books of my own, like what I thought was good stuff. Plus, I uh, had this big storage locker that I'd been piling stuff in for years and years and sorted through that and just moved it all in there and put it on shelves and had a used bookstore. This was um, 1984. And I never lost money until after uh, the internet <laughs> really asserted itself. So like about circa 2003, 2004, the, the neighborhood had changed the demographics of the people who lived there because when I started in that neighborhood, there were a lot of artists and musicians and theater people. And um, at the end, it was uh, they had all fled because it was too expensive. And it was, you know, people with good jobs, but people who were much less interested in what I was doing. So I had to uh, move or, or just close. And that's how I ended up here on, on Michigan Avenue. I mean, the store itself is the nicest version of my store. It's just beautiful, and the, the culture of this building is just really nice and, you know, stimulating, and it's just full of, you know, really creative and interesting people. But being on the second floor, it's harder for people to notice over there, and a lot of my older customers on Broadway lost track of me, because no matter how much we advertise, most people don't hear it, and, and um, so I had to kind of start from scratch, and uh, culture it's just working against what I do. It's just drifting to digital forms of entertainment and information, and it's just the way it is. And so fewer and fewer people want this stuff that I'm trying to sell. And what are your plans for the, for the remaining books? Well, the ones that don't sell, they're going to go. I have a relationship with a, a book sale in Hyde Park, the Hyde Park Kingman Community Council hmm. sale, and so they're going to get as much as they can deal with. If I overwhelm them. <laughs> and the Newberry Library is Plan B. Well, I'll go somewhere. I'm not going to toss anything out. You know. So tell me about what people can still find here. I just try to have high-quality um, books having to do with the humanities, liberal arts, you know, history, you know, philosophy, poetry, literary fiction, um, theology, Judaica, Eastern thought. And then, you know, there's things like cookbooks and kids' books and theater and movies. Um, there's, a, there's a big section of uh, vintage paperbacks that people have been taking some of it, but there's still a lot of cool stuff left there. A lot of cool cookbooks. A lot of cookbooks. I mean, how, how long you're still going to be here? With, and... Yeah, I'll be here in probably through the second week of June. I'm taking the cat home. My, my cat is probably the most famous aspect of, of the store. He was in my ear as we started. And he's the author of a couple of books that uh, are for sale here. And he has um, quite a following. I get uh, literally every day I have people coming in looking for Hodge, to want to see Hodge. I'm bringing him so, home uh, over Memorial Day weekend because uh, he needs to get acclimatized to his new 
home, which is going to be my house. He's lived here except the, the few days a year that the building closes, like the 4th of July and Thanksgiving, and, you know, things like that. I had always brought him home. And so he loves being home. He's, 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 you know, he likes it, but he's never been there more than a couple of days straight, and then he comes back here. So um, it's not a place where he thinks of as his, his spot. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs>